Hello and welcome to another episode of Sports Weekly. As Ferrari rediscover their F1 form that helped construct big names such as Niki Lauda and Fernando Alonso, a young German lad by the name of Mick has been following in his father's footsteps. I'm talking about Schumacher, Mick Schumacher to be precise. His father Michael may have a name instantly relatable to anything and everything F1 and Ferrari, but his son, who is now 18, has steadily been carving out his own successful path to glory. However, there's been one man standing in his way. A couple of years ago and before his recent move into F3, Mick Schumacher finished second in the Junior Kart World and European Championships. Why? Because a young man named Enam won both of them and has been smashing records ever since. This year he became the youngest F3 driver ever to win three races and set three fastest lap times all in a single race weekend. Enam Ahmed joins me now in the studio. Enam, welcome to Sports Thank Weekly. You. Thanks for having me. Uh, Liz, we'll, we're going to get into your story in a moment, but what was it like beating a Schumacher not once but twice in the same year? Well, what can I say? He was a tough competitor. He was uh, actually, when I first saw him when I was 13 years old, uh, when Michael was still there, um, it was, he was a really, really strong driver straight away because it was our rookie years. Uh, we were finishing about sixth, seventh in races because usually in, in racing you have a two year thing. So uh, I knew me and him were so close already when it came to our second year in, in European and world karting, it'd be me and him as a rivalry. So straight away when I came into 2014, he was, um, he was there and we, we were fighting each other the whole year, like really, really tough. And we did loads of races together, some of which in which we came together quite a few times. Um, we had strong arguments, but yeah, it was a really good race. Yeah, because I was thinking, you know, you, you said you were, you were sort of good mates and are still good mates. Uh, that must have been quite difficult when you're out back, when you're out on the track, and you know that the media attention is on uh, Mick, obviously because as a son of Michael Schumacher, one of the greatest F1 re racers of our times. Uh, it must have been quite difficult, sort of, you know, at the same time you're saying, "Well, sorry, mate, I know we're pals, but I'm beating you like twice this year." Well, uh, yeah, well, yeah. At the time, he was um, he was actually under a different name. He was under um, Mick Junior. So no one actually knew that. It was, well, obviously we knew that it was Michael's son, but um, yeah, he was trying to keep it on the down low. But um, yeah, as he said, once the European and World Karting Championships came along and me and him were always in the top three, then he got a lot more media exposure. So that helped me also boost my career because to beat such a, such a drive with his pedigree uh, it's really boosted my career. You, uh, you've been racing, what, since you're about 10, around about that? Yeah, since yeah. I was 10 years old. Yeah. And you're 17 now. Um, you, I mean, obviously, you 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 won the the, the karting was the the world and European at the age of fourteen. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. and that surpassed because Lewis Hamilton won it at fifteen, didn't he? I mean, that yeah. must make that must make you feel kind of quietly proud. Yeah. Well, that that was quite a proud moment, uh, especially winning both. It's usually unheard of to win both in the same year. Usually, people either win the European and then don't win the worlds, or someone wins the worlds and doesn't win the European. So, yeah, I was really really happy about that. Um, but yeah, I was racing since I was ten years old. Um, never thought I'd be in the position I am now. Um, I was just doing it as a fun hobby to, you know, bond with my dad. You know, because I never, you know, um, as kids I'm always at school or something like that, and I wanted to find a sport that maybe I could potentially be good at. Um, I tried everything like football. I wasn't. I'm not particularly great at football, but uh, yeah, and I found to be pretty good at racing. And I started off in a very small track and called Rye House in Hoddesdon, and um, yeah, then things just escalated from there. And then before I knew it, I was racing kids when I was 12 years old in um, the British Championship, racing hundreds of kids uh, yeah, through the whole year, um, which is what Lewis Hamilton did as well um, when he was 12. And um, yeah, things escalated, and now I'm in Formula Three. But it's not your typical—it's um, not your typical sport that you would, that you know, that you might get started. I mean, obviously, you know, you took us back to the beginning a moment there. It, 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 was it? Was you said you weren't that interested in football? Those the sort of the big, the sort of sports that everyone knows. And obviously, F1 is F1 is a huge sport. But you're not going to start at F1 from the beginning, are you? So what? What made you sort of really think, right? I want to start this journey. It's going to be a long one. Um, you know, what, did you have support from your family? What made you stick with it? Um, well, when actually Lewis won the World Championship in 2008, that's when I realised, oh, I want to I I somehow get started in racing. But I didn't think of getting to F1 at the time. All, all I cared about was doing some go-karting, which is what I did with my friends. You know, I think most people do it anyway, like, you know, for fun. And um, that's how I started off. And um, not until I was, well, 13 or 14 was when I realised and I, and I started winning races. I was like, oh, I can make a career out of this. 
Um, but up until then, it was it was just for fun, and, and I had my dad behind me. He was always drove me to the tracks, and we were when it was raining, ice, snow in the winter, he'd always be there supporting me. Yeah, because your dad has as well. he has been a key supporter, isn't it? Do you think yeah. that? Do you think that uh, without that drive of because sometimes there's always that. That, that sort of the line that people draw, how much should a, a parent sort of pressure their, their kids into doing something and, and, and how much is, do you want to do it yourself? So I guess that balance was, was, was bang on, yeah. really. Well, actually, um, it's funny that actually, it was actually my mum that took me more, more seriously, more than my dad, because my dad just thought it was, it was more for fun. But when I really used to say to my mum, look, I really want to want to do this because we're actually doing quite well at the moment. When, when I was about 11 years old, um, she actually took me seriously and really supported me to, to go fulfill my potential. Then we entered the British Championship when I was, when I was 11 years old, and yeah, then everything escalated from there. It's quite incredible. I mean, you, I mean you've sort of, especially at this, uh, the, the younger ages, obviously, you know, you've got the rest of your career, to, to, and I hope it all, it's all going to work out fantastically, but in those early stages, you know, you have surpassed the likes of Lewis Hamilton, Jensen Button, Michael Schumacher, especially with winning um, some of those early races. Uh, the pressure must be, do, do you feel pressure? In, in needing to succeed and, and keep sort of performing like that? Um, well, there's always pressure in, in any sport you do. So, um, but I tend to thrive off it because uh, without any pressure, there's no, there's no adrenaline for me. You know, I like, I like uh, having pressure on myself, but also most of the 75% of the pressure is usually put on by myself, you know, because I really want to succeed in this sport. And I've taken the last seven years of my life and put my, my you know, my heart into it. And, and I'm not going to ruin it uh, and do silly things just to ruin it. So I'm really like, really committed at the moment and um, yeah hopefully we'll see how it goes because you've had some media attention but it, but but I, I I'm sort of I'm wondering if it's really going to kick off at some point you know and I'm just wondering if, if that's obviously a completely different type of pressure but you're saying that you know the more pressure the better you like that you won't be phased it won't affect your driving in any way so that you know when you if you're if you're asking me to come and do interviews like this or you're doing a lot more off the off the uh, the circuit you'll be fine with that yeah Anything you throw at me, I don't mind. Okay, yeah. that's, that's great. Um, now, um, it must be um, quite uh, costly. It must be quite expensive. Because, um, you know, when you start off karting, uh, you, you know, you, you've got to have all the gear. You've got, I mean, you, you, you know better than me. You're going to be providing a helmet. You don't obviously provide your own car, or do you? No. no. So, but but the, the general cost of following it through from karting all the way in, and if you if you know you're starting to uh, go up through karting yeah. from F4, F3, and all the way, how much of that is um, on you or on on your family, as opposed to say uh, maybe sponsors or someone else who will pick up some of that cost? Yeah, it's it's a tough sport. Like you know, that's why it's hard for some people to start in it because it's an expensive sport. But um, I took him. In, my dad always said to me, "Look, we didn't have the funds to, to do it at, from to start with. You know, we, we did the first year of racing, and to get really into the higher leagues was really difficult for us. And that that was where the pressure came from. You either succeed, or, you, or, or I'm going to stop racing. That was it. So as you can see, like on my helmet here, we got here. I've complete. I've got a full helmet sponsorship deal with with Stilo Helmets, and also I got Nicky Gris, who's one of my main sponsors. And in the last two years, we've gained seven sponsors on the car. To, you know, to, that are really supporting me." Um, three of which that have supported me from casting onwards, um, and they've really helped me. And uh, if I do well this year, um, let's see what happens. Hopefully, an F1 team might pick me up. But you know, it's still a long way to go. Um, as a, a lot of drivers that I've raced against, especially from karting, have been perfectly talented enough to go to F1. But funds have been um, the things that stop them from getting there. Uh, but I've been lucky enough with the way I've presented my image and everything like that. Um, I've been able to pick up so many sponsors and I'm always looking for more because, you know, there's always space on the car. Yeah, because, I mean, they really go whole hog. I mean, just looking at your helmet here, I mean, you've got Enam written down the top. Uh, you've got, you've got, what was here, what, just on yeah, the front? Yeah, Bismillah, Hedrick Manor. Bismillah, yes. You, I mean, you know, that, that's, that's some serious customization. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I, I ride a motorcycle line and my helmet cost me a fortune, but I'm guessing, so, so that means that, you know, once, once someone identifies uh, that uh, you're, 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 you've got that ability, you've got that knack, does it go straight in there and you know immediately you've got sponsors knocking at your door calling you up is it very much like that is it sort of boom and bust or bust well yeah p people only like winners in any sport you do it's, it's just hard isn't it so you, you know you really got to do the best of your ability um at the moment actually in racing it's been tough for many people to get sponsors like for me it's been even tough like the, uh, the, the last year or so um, why is that why? it's just 
I don't know, it's, it's, when you get to the higher leagues, especially with, with higher teams, but before in racing, there was not much TV coverage as well. So it was people like, well, why would we want to sponsor you? But now ITV4 and BT Sport have got F3 Championship on live TV. So, you know, it's, everything's all of a sudden boomed. But as I said, from karting, especially being the only, I won five championships in one year in karting when, in 2014. And that was pretty much unheard of. And once I got that and I got presented in front of the FI, in front of um, all the FI Awards Gala in Qatar, um, in front of, you know, Total Bull for all the Mercedes guys, all the different teams. Ever since then, I've been able to get sponsors um, just off the pedigree that I've got. But now it's car racing. Now it's another level. Uh, car racing is very different to karting. Uh, it was hard for me my first year in cars. Uh, but now second year uh, with Carlin, which, are, which is on my visor strip, actually. Uh, they're the best team in F3. Um, been lucky enough to get all five sponsors together. And you know, give me the budget to do the year. So see how it goes. So, uh, but you, you found you found you were saying that the, the 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 sort of the car side of sponsorship is much harder than the karting. Is that because of the sort of money they're putting in, or is it is it to do with the fact that they've seen lots of people maybe once they start racing um, properly fast, and you're going F3, and you're uh, you know eventually F1. You're talking big money, big cars. Yeah. Uh, people make their names and break their names, I and mean, that's sort of the pressure I'm talking about. That's probably why yeah. it's quite hard to get that yeah. sponsorship. It, it is it is really really tough, um, especially because uh, in the past uh, people have taken big risks on drivers and it hasn't worked out. But then you look at drivers like Max Verstappen or, or even Lewis, like Lewis. Uh, you know, McLaren took a big risk on him and it and it paid off. Uh, but usually after F3, people are paid to drive. So. Um, okay. Then usually your career is basically taken over after that, you know, you don't have to worry about anything Usually you're hired by a team, uh, but up until then is the real hard bit So moving away from sponsorship, let's talk about the practicalities of, of, of you as a young lad stepping in a car that will go, you know, 150 plus, I mean that's that's fast I mean what, what goes through your mind when you're sitting and you know, you're, you're 17 um, you'll, you'll have had driving experience since you were 10 years old, which is fantastic, but you, you, it's not like you're driving out on public roads. You need to be sharp and focused and be, you know, bang on the money. What goes through your mind when you're sat uh, there and you're ready to race? Um, usually there's a lot of nerves and uh, uh, there is some fear as well because, you know, it, it, can, it is a dangerous sport. I've always seen there's been quite a horrible week this last week in racing. Because there was, there's been, we had yeah. that horrible crash in F4. Yeah, my, my friend Billy Mongo obviously uh, lost his legs and that's a really, really sad thing. I've raced him since I was um, nine, ten years old. So, um, yeah, that's, that's not been a good week. But um, usually, I'm just got, I got loads of adrenaline because every time I get into a car, it's like you know, this is it. It's all I care about in my life is this one race. Or you know, I, I take everything race by race, lap by lap, corner by corner. That's literally all I care about. Um, and every time I jump into a race car, it's always been like that. So. I forget about everything and then just get on with the job. And we wish we wish them the best uh, for for recovery. But does does those do those sorts of incidents, do they make you think twice ever when when you see that the sort of speed that you are going and and you're relying purely on your skill and the quality of of the mechanics and the car, um, does that ever cross your mind or do you just do you just shut that out? Um, no, because that's that's a risk that you take when you race cars. And when you're racing cars at 150 mile an hour, you don't expect to not have. If something's going to happen, it's going to happen. Um, but no, um, I have full faith in my, in my team. They've given me the best car so far, uh, Carlin. First time I've worked with them, and they have a really big history of running so many F1 drivers. You know, all the red, nearly every Red Bull driver as well has been with them. Um, you know, I think it's something like 15 of the F1 drivers on the grid have raced with Carlin. So I'm really, really happy with them. Um, but yeah, that's racing. That's a risk you take, just like with any sport, just like with boxing. You can't expect to go into a ring and not get hurt. You're, um, I mean, I guess it's, it sounds very much to me that you have that same sort of um, uh, tenacity and competitiveness that, say, Lewis Hamilton does, that idea that when you're in the car, uh, it's not a question of, you know, trying to do the best. You, you absolutely see first position as being your, your goal. And I know, I know every driver sees that, but there's, there must be something else within the, your mind or talent aside that, that makes you think, I am not finishing this race uh, unless I'm first. Is that, is, that, does that, is that the sort of thing that you're, that when you're sat there and you're about to start the race, yeah. you're looking to get into that position as quick as possible so you can take command and, and lead yeah. throughout the whole race? Well, uh, usually actually qualifying is the most important part of the whole race weekend because if you start on pole, usually yeah. you stay there. Um, but yeah, the, in racing, or well, in, in all sports, you've got to be the winner. No, everyone only cares about the winner. Um, and you know, especially with the sport being expensive, if you're not the winner, you, you know, I could lose my funding or lose all my sponsors and no more racing, just like that. So no, that's where also the pressure comes from things like that. Does that run through your family? Does this? Uh, yeah, well, yeah, well, um, 
I think through, through my family, they've not been that sporty, to be honest. Uh, I've always been, I've been the first person to be like proper into sports. But um, yeah, you know, in all forms of sport, if you want to succeed, you've got to be the winner and second is the first loser. So, yeah. Now, obviously, you're, you're a young Muslim man as well. And there's, there's a lot of pressure on Islam generally across the globe. It's something I'm interested to ask you because I wondered, as with all sports and as, you know, the reality of life, we always face hurdles and and have you ever come up against that in in the sport have you ever felt that um uh you, anything to do with your your social background or your your beliefs has, has that ever have you ever felt that's come in the way of of racing or has have anyone has anyone else put hurdles in the way based on that or has um, it been a smooth ride no i've never had a problem well to be honest in racing no matter where you come from what race you are what anything um you know uh, if you prove your, if you do your talking on the track and you're a good driver, people usually respect that. It was hard for me at first, but it's hard for any driver when they start racing. When you start at the back and you know no one respects you or anything like that, you know, uh, especially in karting, you know, when when all rookies get treated badly. Uh, but once I started doing well, everyone respected me. I get on with everyone really, really well. Um, never felt that uh, to be a problem. Do you think? I mean, do you think like uh, you know, uh, specifically when racing cars, whether it's F4, F3, F1, uh, do you think that it it, it it does require a certain background? There there is that element of luck because you know whether it's financial, uh, your financial situation, or, is, or whether it, you you have the right contacts. Yes, I know in lots of walks of life, you know, if you have contacts in certain areas, it can get you far. But do you feel that there are? Do you ever sort of think that there may be? other talented people out there as well who may not have the same opportunities as you but are could be rare, raring to go but just are not in that position to get involved in something like in racing cars for a living um well yeah there, there's quite a few situations like that actually at the moment racing uh, there's never been so in junior categories particularly especially from karting onwards there's never been so many people doing it at the moment there's there's tens of thousands of drivers at the moment and now the pool of talent is so big so to really separate yourself from another driver, you've got to be extra good. Uh, um, but yeah, um, tend to be now in racing, like you know, uh, drivers have to have a good image about them. Uh, like Lewis Hamilton's very, very marketable. He's very good at being marketable, marketable person. You know, very good at interviews and things like that. So that does play a part in it. But the driving does the talking at the end of the day. Like he was the quickest in everything he ever did in his whole life. So mm, I mean, if I can be the same, hopefully I'll get picked up one day. I guess that's it. There's going to be some of the, that element where you're going to have to maybe market yourself. You're going to have to appear at those certain events and, and so on. Uh, what, how much, because um, just going back to your, your dad again, do you, uh, you, you, said, you said that your, your mum was, was the person who sort of really kind of got you into it, but your dad has sort of obviously seen you, both your parents have seen yeah. you all the way sort of through. Um, are you're, from what I understand, you're sort of on the lookout to be managed or you, you, you're looking at a possibility of, of receiving management offers. Have I got that correct? Well, yeah, at the, at the moment I've, I've had um, management offers, but um, at the moment I'm happy, I'm happy doing it as I am at the moment. It's been going quite well. I don't have any managers, um, but you know, I, I have both parents uh, behind me, but mainly it's me that makes the decisions because I'm 17 now. Uh, I know what teams are good. I know what teams are bad. I know, I know where I want to go, what path I want to take to get to Formula One. Um, so mainly a lot of the stuff is down to me, but We'll see how it goes. <laughs> what would you say to anyone who wants to pursue a dream like this? You know, what, 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 when someone sees something that they want to, you know, chase, and in this case, in your case, you know, you started off karting, and you know, with any luck, and I wish you the best of luck, we will be able to see you in, in F1. Uh, I, I, what, what would you sort of say to to someone who, who might be watching this and, and seeing you at such a young age, um, uh, in this position? Is there any advice or, 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 or suggestions you would give them? Um. Through my racing career, actually, um, when I like to think of it as like a big progressive curve, uh, you start off really well. I, I was progressing like enormously, and then I started winning. And then it's only when you're at the top of your game, and then when you get beat down, that's when it's the hardest. Like in 2015, was probably the hardest year I've ever had racing because it was my first year in cars. I won the World and European Championship. All the expectation was on me because um, I was supposed to be the next big thing and the first half of the year I struggled and I nearly lost all my sponsors so like I was only going to stop racing just like that and that was the hardest moment of my life uh, but then second half of the year I won the races and I performed and I, and I kept them now in my second year uh, in F3 
and with the best team and uh, we'll see how that goes. So you could say that the pressure did have a little bit of an effect on you in that early that early stage of 2015 because you were saying you thrive on that pressure yeah. but w what I guess you were saying was that at the beginning it did affect you but you rode that pressure to say well look I'm not going to let that you know knock me down I'm going to win this. Well um, actually the, the reason why I was struggling at the start was because uh, I was straight out of karting, and usually a rookie straight right. out of karting. When you make it the jump to cars, I was 15 at the time. I was the, one of the youngest ever to do that. Uh, usually you're 16 when you do it. It was really tough, but um, people man the pressure. But I didn't really, I didn't really care. I took four races, and I was on it again. And I won, I won six races in the last half of the year, and I was back on it. So yeah, never, seriously, the one advice I give is never give up because even when things look impossible, it never is. Excellent. Uh, you're uh, uh, just we're coming towards the end of uh, of the show, but uh, you're you're going to be you're, you're you're obviously looking to win as as many as you can because the F3 season's barely started, really. Um, uh, what what what's kind of your 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 end goal? I mean, obviously you're probably going to want to try and get yourself all the way to F1, but if you might, do you have any sort of specific goals that you would like to carve out? Um, you know, as a young Muslim man here in Britain. There must be a few things that you really want to, to do, aside from just winning the races, which is a big thing, of yeah. course. Is there anything that you want to stamp your name on and say that I, Inam Ahmed, did that? Um, at the moment, I just want to be the youngest guy to win British F3, which is this year. And if, 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 if I win it at 17, then I'll be the youngest, youngest ever to win it. And loads of F1 drives took this route that I'm taking and, and I've won it. So all I focus on is literally one race at a time. Uh, I'm not thinking too far ahead because you know who knows where life can take me. I can I can end up doing NASCAR in the Oval. Or I could race in Japan. It really does. I really don't know. Uh, but yeah, I'll take it race by race. It's probably a bit early to say this, but have you thought about uh, what you might do sort of towards the end of your career? Have you thought about where you would potentially go, or is that not even a, an option yet at the moment? It's not even not. That's <laughs> why I'm not even thinking about that. Um, my career is just starting at the moment. Uh, my career will be defined with how I do this year. So let's see how it goes. And uh, you, th you think you're you're on the money this year? You think you're yeah. gonna? Uh, team's given me a really good car. Uh, I'm really integrated well with them. Um, and yeah, we'll see how it goes. It'll be I, exciting. I'm particularly looking forward to to seeing when you and Mick uh, race again because I know at the moment we were saying before the show that you've gone slightly different routes because yeah. he's European and you've stuck UK. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Um, he's doing the European F3, uh, which is. Prefer say the the hardest junior single seater category you can do in the whole world before F1. Um, I'm doing the British Championship currently because I'm a year younger than him. Uh, but hopefully I'll be looking to move into that next year, and then we'll have another fight on our hands just like we did when we were 14. I bet, I bet. Well, it's going to be great. Uh, and now, um, listen, thank you very much for taking the time out and coming into the studio today. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, sadly, we've um, run out of time for this week's show, but uh, that's not all you'll be seeing of Enam. As the Formula 3 season continues, we'll be catching up with him later to check on his progress, and we'll also join him trackside as he tells us more about the car he's racing and what it's like to be young, Muslim, and extremely fast. But for now, from all of us here on Sports Weekly, goodbye.